What's up, YouTube? Bollies Quickie. Oh, there's another bit. Right, Bollies Quickie, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to have a rant. I'm going to have a rant. <laughs> Everything is going wrong. Well, a couple of bits is going all right. But most of it is all going wrong. So, uh, Van is still sitting outside, still waiting on that stupid centre. Uh, sensor for the, the the fuel pressure sensor thing that still ain't turned up that was ordered a couple of weeks ago um, and I'm basically I'm not mobile until it gets here so I'm still waiting on that however the stupid thing is right where is it <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that in a minute um, the stupid thing is I ordered these two days ago two days ago these are just some uh, plumbing fittings um, which I'm going to be monkeying about with and changing just a little bit for the shock blaster because I'm t I am going to turn it into a vapor blaster. I've decided two days ago I ordered these, and that's turned up. So why can't the sensor turn up? It's all coming by raw mail. It's just annoying, like properly annoying, almost as annoying as to what happened this morning. So I've come. It has been lashing down with rain. It's been horizontal, and I'm coming here today. Um, and I've still got my puddle on the bench, so he still hasn't fixed my roof. So I've been down the office mooing for the last 20 minutes. He's going to get it sorted over Christmas. So that's all good. However, loads of stuff in here had flash rusted. Look, this is just some of the, um, the scrap stock I've got kicking about that I turn and mill stuff with. Look, it's all break. Look, can you, can you see? Some size is okay. That's kind of what it was sitting on. Other bits, not so much, look. Um, and you think, well, okay, it's just scrap. You know, it's, it's, as soon as you turn it off or mill it, that'd be fine, and it will be. However, the mill and the lathe, and I've just spotted my vice, flash rusted. Look, you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but it's on the handle and the jaws here, and that bit there. Normally, everything in here is covered in oil. I've not used them for a couple of weeks, I think. So, you know, it, it gets oiled and then wiped down and stuff. But there was like the chuck and bits of the saddle and my vice on the mill, that had flash rusted as well. So I've just spent the past like two hours scrubbing it all down with Scotch Bright and oil and getting all of it off. And I've doused the whole damn thing with oil again. Do, you know, I'm not happy. Those two are my pride and joy. Um, then what happens is I think, okay, we'll turn them on, get some oil pumping. Did that with the mill, he's fine. He always is. The lathe, yeah, it's not going. <laughs> it's not going. Um, turned it on and it went really, really slowly and then it just stopped. So it could be one of the things that people was going on about is I need a bigger inverter. And that could be the case. I don't really know. What I do know is I need Jamie to come and have a look. Because <laughs> that's not so great. Um, oh, a good thing. That I can't remember him. I've been through my phone looking. And I can't remember. I can't find the comment and the, the thread of messages and everything else. But there was a fella got in touch going, I've got some old tooling that's kicking around. Do you want it? And I went, oh yeah, go on then, it's always handy. And he sent me some of this. I've got, um, it looks a little bit antique -y, but that's a dead centre, that's gonna be mega. Um, really handy, that is. Um, so, uh, and all this will clean up just instantly, that's all fine. He sent me some old milling bits, which have still got a bit of an edge to them on the sides, um, and on the bottoms on most of them. But I've got like uh, three and two flute slotting mills. I've got a six flute mill, and that's another two flutey jobby. Um, but they're all dead good, look. Proper chunky it is. And the pride and joy, he sent me this, look. It's a facing mill cutter. It's a six, six, um, it's got six inserts to it. So you can just undo these screws and pop the inserts out and stick other ones in and whatnot. But that's, that's like the same size as the, the fly cutter that I've got. I mean, that's gonna chomp through stuff on him. I need to change the arbor out, that's the wrong taper. But I'll find an arbor, that's, that's not a problem. But that is mint. I've been after something like this for a little while. Um, I did find a littler one. Um, but you know, I can do... <laughs> How good is that? I'm really sorry I can't name you and embarrass you a little bit. You know, just to do a proper thank you. But thank you ever so much for that. That is mega. So that's all gonna get cleaned up and shoved on the shelf and covered in oil. Well, he needs to fix it. He just, he just needs to do it. Um, was, oh, another thing that went wrong. <laughs> so the shock blaster is getting turned into a vapor blaster. However, I was looking for a waterproof light because it's black. <laughs> it's black. Um, 
and you can shine a light in it, it's really dark and dingy just because it's black, it's like looking in a black hole. So I need a really bright light in it. So I went online, found some waterproof LED lamps and thought, oh, that'd do. How big do you want? Well, I don't know, 150 watt, that'd do, that'd be fine. And it turned up. <laughs> it's a little bit big. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what I might do, I haven't really decided yet. <laughs> I suppose I could always cut a hole in the side of it and just, you know, stick a panel in the side and have that on the other side. That could work. That'd be all right. Um, either that or I'm just going to get a smaller one and mount it on the inside. <laughs> little bit overkill. It's cheap as chips, but it's a little bit big. And the other thing, the carbs, I got it wrong. I did, I got it wrong. That little E-clip that goes on the needles, I'll put it on the fourth slot up from the bottom of the needle and it should have been fourth slot down from the top. And there was a few people that spotted it. I fessed up to it in the comments and everything else because I always will do. Um, but I got it wrong. So these have got to come off again, <laughs> which is really annoying. This is really annoying. But you know, it is what it is. And somebody else made the comment that it would probably make more sense to switch the float bowls around just because um, the bleed screws can then face outwards, which will just be easier to get to. So now I've cleared all that up, that's gonna be the first job. We're gonna try and get that broken screw out and get all these done and dusted so it's sorted. And then we can move on, because I've got a little bit of fabrication to do. Right, so we're starting on the bottom and all I'm doing is switching these over. So there, you can see the float bowls are slightly different. The drain screw is on this side, drain screws on that side, on the two separate ones. The trouble is I had these ones on that side and these ones on that side. So yeah, it just makes it awkward getting to the, the drain screw. So somebody spotted it and said, why don't you just switch them over? And it's a damn good idea, why wouldn't you? You can just get to stuff easier that way. So that's what I'm doing. Um, the screws that's going back into it is these jobbies. So they're, they're a Torx head, um, stainless steel, um, we're not going with Allen's, just because Allen's roll over quite easily and you can round them off. And then you can have all sorts of troubles trying to get them out. Um, so we're going with the Torx ones. Um, I have got some more slightly longer ones coming. I mean, these go in, but I would like to have a little bit more thread engagement, really. Um, so these are 12s. I've got some 15s coming. Um, and we'll just switch them out when they get here. Um, you know, for, for like the final build. As far as running it on a dyno, these will be absolutely fine. Um, so we'll get these buttoned up, and we'll flip it over, and we'll do the other thing that people spotted, which is put the E-clip on the right slot on the needle. I can't believe I got that wrong. Um, I'm not really one for reading instructions, but I should do, really. I should do. All right, come on, you can go down. I need to get some slightly longer ones as well for for these two at the back, because this is obviously where the, the idle screw sits and they are longer. So for now, we're using Allen's, but like I say, they will get switched out and these are stainless anyway. So we can go on like that. nipple them up and we should be good to go. Right, so, there we go. Right, so, I don't know if you can see, these are the bits that I got wrong. There's two things I got wrong. I don't know if you can see, I'll, I'll see if I can do the zoomy thing, but I had the E-clip in the fourth slot up from the bottom and it should have been fourth slot down from the top. Um, the other thing that I got wrong which is, yeah, people didn't spot it. <laughs> but I've just gone through the instructions again and I found out these washers are both supposed to go on the top. I don't really know why. Maybe it's a packer up to the retainer. Don't really know, it doesn't say in the instructions. It just says they're both supposed to go on the top of the needle and then the retainer goes on top of that. So, I'm just going through doing this on all of them. So we is all good. And 
turn that, retain it, and go back on top like that. Jobs are good. Hmm? And then he can go back in there. I just need to move my carp so I can see the hole it's going into. No, it's not there. <laughs> right, I don't know where that is. <coughs> Basically, I'm just dragging out stuff that I want to chuck back on the bike, so I know I'm going to have to chuck it on the bike to get it back on the dyno. So, um, first things first, have a brew, because it's the law. Um, but yeah, so I've just been dragging stuff out. So in order to get this running on a dyno, this is most of what we're going to need. Um, as well as some wiring, but we'll get to that later. So in no particular order is pod filters. I've already shoved the carbs on, so that's all good and fine. But pod filters, coils, need somewhere to put the M unit. We've got the ECU. We've got the clutch cover, because obviously you pull it and it activates this thing. So if you want the clutch, that's got to go on. All cooler. Um, I'm thinking what I might do, because I've got those lines that um, I've got sent in, um, and I know I'm not going to be running that oil cooler, but for now I can just hook it up so at least we've got some cooling. Um, we've got some switch gear, throttle cables, um, they're the oil lines, you can tell because they're leaking everywhere. <laughs> What's that? Quick action throttle, uh, the instrumentation, chain, and a whole mess of nasty there. I am going to have to rob some of this, um, not all of it. But I am going to need a starter solenoid and stuff like that. Um, so we'll have to pick through this and decide what it is that we're going to be using. So all that lot needs to get chucked back on the bike over the next few days. <laughs> you can guess what the next videos are going to be, can't you? Um, we can start getting it dyno ready. So I suppose you might as well start with the easy stuff and just clear some of the desk, eh? Right, chain. So, chain, uh, nice new 520 chain, so he's going to go on. Um, just for the purposes of the dyno run, I am going to be running that split link thing, um, just because I know the chain's going to have to come off again, because we're going to have to get swing arms and everything else out again um, before the bike's all finished. So, I'm just going to run the split link um, for now, which will be fine. Come on, go round, go round, there we go. And then uh, we can always have it out later on and put the proper rivet link in. That sounds horrible, doesn't it? It's rubbing on the paper. <laughs> All right, so he's gonna go on like that obviously and get adjusted. All right, where's that link?
All right, I'm going to be setting the chain really rather tight, actually. <laughs> Which sounds a bit dodgy, but it's not. Reason being is that when it goes on a dyno, um, you don't get any weight transference because you know, there's, there's no forward motion of the bike, so as you give it the beans, ordinarily your weight transfers to the back wheel. Well, that don't really happen on a dyno, not at all. Um, so because we've got like a rising rate suspension and everything else, on a dyno when you give it the beans, the back of the bike actually goes up. Um, I'll sit, if, if you go back and have a look at the first one of the, the dyno, it was really good because it was, it was done in um, McPherson motorcycles and they've got this massive viewing window from the side that you can stick a camera up against. Um, and you'll see it actually goes, so as he's giving it the beans, the back of the bike is lifting up, it's not actually squashing down. On the road, it would be the other way around. Um, so basically, if your chain is, is sort of set as you would have it on the road, in essence, because that, the, the, the front sprocket, the swing arm pivot point, and um, the rear wheel aren't all in a dead straight line, um, as the back of the bike goes up, the angle of the swing arm comes down, this distance gets shortened and your chain goes loose, which isn't a very good thing. So I am going to be setting it purposely a little bit on the tight side. Um, the hash marks on this aren't too bad, but I quite like these little chain alignment tools because they're a doddle to use. All you do is like clamp it onto the rear sprocket, um, you know, get it close to with these little hash marks, clamp this onto the sprocket and then from the back of the bike you just look down the line of this this little rod here and you just want it to line up with the whole chain and that's it then you start adjusting these until you get it right nip it all up jobs are good so that's what i'm doing So that's that done. For a nasty little tool, it's gonna to last five minutes, I reckon. <laughs> it's, the trouble that I had with the other one was just the pins. The pins are rubbish. These little things here for poking out the rivets and that, they just all ball over and get mushroomed and they just look nasty as hell in no time. Um, I do need to get myself another one. Um, but for now, this will do because I can get by with that. Right, okay. Don't need that for the minute. Right, what's next? Oh, I suppose I better put all the links away as well. We'll need them later on. Right. Well, I'm not doing wiring yet, so that can wait. <laughs> throttles. I suppose I could do throttle, couldn't I? I've um, got a little kill switch somewhere. Where's he gone? Here he is. So this is a start stop, you know, pretty standard thing. It's just like quite minimal. So we could shove him on. Really basic one, yeah. So you've just got your, you know, your run and stop, and then obviously your starter button. So that will do. We could get that one stuck on, and then we shove the quick action throttle on, route some throttle cables because I don't know the carbs might have to come off again for that bit. <laughs> I don't know. And then we can get the pod filters on, and then start the coils, and we just work our way through it. Hey. Right, switch gear on this is all going to be quite simple looking. I was looking at, I really wanted to get some of the motor gadget ones because I love the quality of their stuff. It's all like, you know, machined out of alley and everything else, whereas this is like a plastic one, um, as is the stock one. But I just really like the motor gadget stuff. Um, trouble is, we ain't going to get any of that. Are you just going to come off? Come on. Um, I have got another little switch for the other side, 
which is like an offset one. It's going to go with the bike, definitely. I don't like the big clumpy sort of, you know, like this sort of thing. I don't like that. <laughs> Minimal. Less is just more, because it is. Um, but we can stick this on. So we can go on up there anywhere for now. Shove a screw back in. We've still got to have room for the um, the front brake reservoir and all that lot. I did make a bracket for it just to see. Oh, it's all right, but I don't really like it that much, so that's going to get changed. Um, I, I want to make it a little bit thinner. It's a bit too chunky, I reckon. Um, so he's just nipped up for now. Something like that. Then we've got a Domino Quick Action Throttle. Oh, I do like these. Right, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> right, I need to get some throttle cables. Um, I, I swear I had some. I'm sure I did. I can't find them though. <laughs> They're over there somewhere. Right, these are the old throttle cables. They are not very nice and they've also got ferrules on the end of them, which is a little bit of an issue if I wanna put this on. This is my quick action throttle. Um, let me just plonk it all back together again and I'll show you what I mean. Right, so he goes on like that. Oh, no, don't go there. Uh, uh, um. Right, so that's the quick quick action throttle. Okay. Um, it's in, it looks like any other one. There is a cover that goes over here. Um, trouble is, these two um, ports for the cable to go into, these two guides, um, essentially they're made such that you have to put the cable through and then you have to put the ferrule on the end of it. So, you know, it, it don't come apart that bit, which is a little bit on the annoying side. Um, I was going to be replacing the cables anyway, but for dyno run, I was hoping to reuse the others. Um, it is what it is. I needed to get some anyway, so I'll just get some. Um, why is it a quick action throttle? Well, I found part of the old assembly. I can't find the rest of it. Again, it is over there somewhere. If I could find it, I could just use the old ones. Um, but I can't, so there you go. So anyway, this is... Uh, let me come around here and show you. That's the quick action throttle, and that's a standard one, right? And if you put the two together, you'll see that the quick action one, um, where are you? Can you see that? It's bigger in diameter. Um, it's the simplest thing, but essentially for the same twist of this, um, this throttle, essentially because it's a bigger diameter there, you're pulling more of the cable through. I don't know about you, but I tend to find on bikes, you kind of, get to a certain point and you're all quite comfortable because your wrist has gone sort of so far but there's still more throttle there and to pin it you end up doing this when I was racing that was a nightmare because you think you're on full gas and you're not you still got throttle left which is why I switched out to these um on the bigger more powerful bikes you do have to be careful with them because it is you know you are opening the throttle a lot lot quicker um, than you are with this sort of thing. But you don't take long to get used to, and bear in mind this is only a 600, it's not mega power or anything else, it's not gonna be an issue, um, but it might just make riding it a bit more comfortable for whoever gets the bike at the end of the day. So I'm gonna stick all this up back together again so I don't lose any screws. Um, I'll get some cables sorted, and then we'll be able to stick it on. I'm a little bit annoyed about that. <laughs> I suppose we could stick it on anyway, just get it out of the way. Um, but we ain't going to be hooking it up until I get some more of these. Bugger, I haven't even got any ferrules. If I did, I could probably reuse them. Never mind, never mind. Right. Right, so that's the assembly. I've got a couple of options here. I could either run it like this, or I could run it like that. And I quite like that. <laughs> um, I think it just looks neater and tidier. The only thing is we're not going to know how best to run it until I get the instruments on and the headlamp bowl. 
because these cables obviously have to feed around somewhere and we also can't have anything snagging up when you're doing your steering. So, yeah, I don't really know. Um, the brake reservoir and the, you know, the front brake and everything else, he's got some room to go in here. Um, so depending on how I locate this, I'm either going to have it coming straight up or it's going to step out and then up to the reservoir. Either way, it's not really an issue because I'm going to be changing the one that I've got anyway. That's just a straight up and down bulky looking thing. I am annoyed about that. That is really annoying, but it is what it is. Right, um, well actually, I might keep them for the seat release. That could work out. Right, what else we got? Um, right, clutch. Where, where's the bloody clutch lever? He's here somewhere. Um, 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 um. Right, I know they're probably gonna have to come off again just to get the throttle cables on, but I really wanna see what they're gonna look like. <laughs> Don't be rolling your eyes and tutting. <laughs> right, I've just stuck the pod filters on. It does look pretty cool from the side, it has to be said. I do like the look. I put the pod filter boxes back on the shelf. And I just found the cables. <laughs> right then. They'll be coming back off again then, wouldn't they? Um, what else have got in here? Domino grips. Just because I quite like them. Um, oh, that's where it went. <laughs> I ended up getting another one of those kill switches. Uh, I was going to need two anyway, um, one for this bike and one for the S-Rad when I come to do it. Um, and I couldn't find it, so I had to order another one. <laughs> but I've got one for the S-Rad now as well, so that's all fine. And they're junk. Right. <laughs> Right then, we might be going for a third option. <laughs> Which looks a little bit like this. So, um, reasons for doing this is, but I've got, I've got me, I've found the throttle cables, which is all good and crusty, and I've literally just got the outer, the, like the outer sheath in place. I haven't run the, you know, the cores or put ferrules on the end or anything else. With it oriented this way, um, essentially the, the cable from the, the switch gear comes out and it's all together, but it's also going to go beneath the, um, the instrumentation and sort of above and behind the, uh, the headlamp. So I still need to make up these um, spacer tubes with the mounting brackets for this on, but if that's going to go something a bit like that, I would guess something like that. And then we've got the, the instrumentation to go in there as well. I mean, it's kind of... It's a bit nip and tuck as to which way best to orient it. Really, I need to put that in place and make up the tubes for this and get that in place and get it all sorted before I decide which way this is going to go. And that means I can't really cut the cables or get any of that stuff done until I know, is it that way? Is it straight in front or is it over the top? Brilliant. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be a problem like that though. I mean, it's kind of, it's when you turn to the left that the cable is going to bow out. Um, can I stick the bottom on? I could probably stick the bottom on. Although that needs changing as well. Right, so, another small dilemma. <laughs> everything needs changing. No, not everything. Well, some stuff does. Um, okay, so this is the Speedo that I'm going to be using. And very lovely it is too in my nice housing and everything else that I, I lovingly made and then I powder coated stupidly. 
But I just wanted to protect it. Um, so there's a few bits and pieces about this that need to be changed. Let me just pull all this lot out and I'll show you what I mean. So where's the old one? Um, let me get the old one. Hang on. Right, so this is the old Speedo that I was going to be using, which isn't nearly as nice. Look, I do much prefer that one. I just think it looks better. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> they're different sizes, look. It's not by much, but they are different. Five or six mil, something like that. Um, if I stick this on the bike, there is sort of five or six mil, well actually, let me just show you. Right, so if I stick that on the bike, there is five or six mil that is sticking up here. So what I could do is just take the top off and sink this down a bit. You'd still have the bezel of the, um, you know, that bit sticking proud of the, the top yoke. And that could be quite good. That could look all right, I think. As long as it all marries up and stuff, we're in. Um, so I need to change that spacing. So that's not so bad. That's an easy fix. Do that easy. I could probably do it in a bandsaw. <laughs> But then you go and read the instructions and there's other stuff. Um, it doesn't say anything about chopping down the length of this. Um, this is probably going to go into the headlamp bowl. This is the GPS receiver. So this is probably going to go up under the headlamp bowl. Um, you can have it that way behind something. You can have it that way or you can have it that way. Like that. Um, so you know, you can pretty much stick it anywhere it's where you want, really. And I think it will go into the headlamp bowl. I will check before I start chopping stuff up. But it doesn't say anything about the length of these cables being specific. So it picks up a GPS signal. So I ain't too bothered about that. However, when you go through reading the instructions, because I'm into reading instructions now, having done a Dynajet kit wrong. <laughs> um, there's a couple of buttons on the back that we need to get to. So there's two buttons there, one there and one there. And that's basically the mode and the set button. So when you come to calibrating it, there's three different options on how you calibrate it. So you can do an auto calibration mode where you essentially drive exactly one kilometer, which I suppose you could track on your phone. Um, you do a speed adjust where you go along with what you think it is, like 30 or 50 or whatever. Um, and you see what it says, and then you can go and you can adjust it that way. Or well, there's a manual mode, which just sounds a lot more, it's going into like tire circumferences and all that sort of stuff, which is a bit of a pain, but you need to be able to get to those two buttons on the back to set the bugger up. Only trouble is, you can't. <laughs> so I need to change this. So what I could do, um, I could shorten this up or I could just open up that slot. So I've got this slot on the back of it, which you can sort of see, well, you, you can't really see because it's black, but there you go, there's the slot there. So this is obviously where the cables and stuff is going to come out of and to allow access for, for bolting it up and all that sort of thing. Um, so what I could do is open this up a little bit more so you can kind of get in there with your finger to press the buttons. So that's going to be a, probably an angle grinder across there and then a die grinder and stuff. But I can do that, that's not so much of a problem. But then we also come to the other thing, that's got studs on the back of it. That's got screws on the back of it. And they're also spaced differently. I don't know, can you see this? Like that. So screws go in this one, studs is sticking out of that one, but they're actually spaced differently as well. So that needs changing, which means I've got to drill more holes in that bit, which ain't going to be a biggie. I could set that up right, centre pop it, and I could just do that on the pillar drill. That would be fine. That would be absolutely fine. But this does need to change. So this is probably going to be the next job because I need to have um, this in place and the headlamp in place to be able to correctly route the throttle cable so they don't snag on anything and I've got, I can work out my wiring runs and all that sort of stuff. 
So really, this is the bit that has to happen next. Um, I've got a weird thing going on with the lathe as well, which I need Jamie to come down and have a look at. I need to give him a bell. Um, but I know what I want to do as far as mounting the headlamp goes. Um, and that involves machining some tubes and some ends to, so it all fits up nicely and to have an O-ring in there to keep all the weather out and all that sort of stuff. Um, but in order to do that, I need the lathe working, the bloody lathe ain't working, which is a pain. So I need to give the man a bell. But I'm thinking this is gonna be uh, the next job. I can, I can get on and do this. Um, hopefully you can sort the lathe out. Cause I, I mean, I don't know when he stops for Christmas or anything else, but I'll give him a shout. I could get all this lot done whilst he's fixing that. He has got some stuff he wants to do in here as well. I'm not telling you what it is, just in case you know, reasons. Um, <laughs> but if he can do that, and I can do this, then we could move on and get the headlamp mounted. Which I don't really want to do now, because I don't need it for the dyno. <sighs> but I am going to need to know it for the throttle cables, which I do need to have in place for the dyno. So I'm doing the headlamp as well. <laughs> Brilliant, I hate instructions. It always leads to problems, doesn't it? Right, I've been looking at this and measuring stuff and I, I think we're in. So if I take like uh, five or six mil off this top face, then the, the mountings should go down and hit that plate inside. So I've just got to drill two holes in it, the right place, so I can get screws in the back of it and jobs are good. That's all fine. Um, this slot on the back though is definitely gonna have to open up. Cause I, I mean, I've got quite big hands, but I can't get my knuckle in to get far enough to be able to push where the buttons are gonna be. So that is gonna to need to open up and it's probably gonna open up into this domed bit by like five mil or something. Um, you're not gonna see it from the side of the bike because of the way that the yoke steps down. So that's a good thing. And that's quite lucky because I don't want it looking like a turd. But even with it on the bike, you're still gonna to need to be able to get in there to get the buttons. So I don't know how far down this is gonna to have to come. Um, I mean, it's not gonna catch any weather until I open it up down to here, but I don't wanna do that because then you will see it and it will look like a turd. Um, but I don't know, we're probably gonna open it up so far, fit it on, see if I can get my hand in there to you know, change stuff and whatnot to reach those buttons. And once I get it so it's big enough, then happy days. It does mean it's gonna ruin the powder coat. <laughs> but you know, it just means I can change my mind on colors now if I really want it. <laughs> Anyway, so that's where I'm gonna leave it for this one. Um, I've got some thinking to do on this, but I need to get stuff done in a certain order. It's stupid, you know, all I wanted to do was hook up the throttle cables, but I can't do that until this is fitted, and I can't do that until the headlamp's fitted, and I can't do that until the lace sorted. <laughs> Clearly we have a few obstacles to overcome. However, we're on holiday now because it's Christmas time. I will be in here a few days over the holidays and whatnot, so I can crack on and get this stuff done. I'll give Jamie a bell, Jamie a bell and see if he can sort the lathe out so we can get those spaces and stuff done. Well, there you go. That's all I can do today. But thank you ever so much for watching. I do hope you're well and staying safe. I'll see you on the next one. Layers. <laughs>